In this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the 3D cursor in a way that you may not realize that it can help you. So we think of the 3D cursor as a way of relating one object to another or moving one object from one location to another. It's a very powerful relational function in Blender. But in fact, we can use it in a way to facilitate orientation of objects. So let's take a look at this. I've got a scene that we modeled in a previous tutorial of this SSD type of object. And I'm in the process of lighting it, and I've got some of the lights in place, and I'm simply using area lights. They're really wonderful for this type of lighting. The 3D cursor can help us to precisely orient and place lights. And we do this by taking advantage of the fact that the 3D cursor also has rotational orientation in 3D space. So let's take a look at how this can work for us. In the rendering, I've got a bottom area on both of the objects that's kind of dark, and I'd like to put some lighting right there. We can use the 3D cursor to facilitate that. I'm zooming down over this area. With the 3D cursor, I'm going to click on that position. And this is typically what you're going to do, is you're going to click on a position or an element to lock the 3D cursor in that space so that you can operate on that. But what we want to do is have the 3D cursor take on the normal orientation of the click point. So what we're going to do is come over, press the N key, and in the Tool menu, come to where it says orientation and switch it over to geometry. Now when I click on a location here, it's very difficult to see. It's, it's not really obvious. The 3D cursor has oriented itself to the normal of the click point. So the way that we can use that is I'm going to come over to the outliner, lights. I've got a sub collection here called all area lights. Activate that. And then let's zoom out a little bit. Press shift and A come over to the mesh and then create a plane. And then down where it says align, switch from world to 3D cursor, and it aligns itself to the orientation of the normal that we clicked on at that location. Let's change this to 10 inches. And then I can simply pull this away. And that is going to be a fantastic way of easily putting light in that area. So I just need to come down. Let's add a light that I've got set up. And we can turn on the interactive renderer. Now we can see light coming into that location. Let's come in now and add an empty to the location of the 3D cursor. So it's taking on its more traditional function. Come over to, to where we have the area lights, and I'm going to come down to plane. Let's call this area one. And then the empty that we've just created, we're going to call this area one target. And then with area one selected, come down to the constraints tab, and we're going to add a track to constraint to that. Let's go ahead and, and target the actual target. And now, I can come over to this area light and I can move it and it'll stay focused. And so you can kind of see how I can fine tune how I want that light to express on the surface. Let's go ahead and zoom down over this area, at least in the render, so we can kind of see this a little bit better. I'm going to press the N key. It remembers when we come over to the 3D cursor that we're in geometry mode, which we need N key to turn that off. Let's focus down in this area, and I'll move the 3D cursor, and I'm just going to click because I want it to appear maybe about right there. So it's taken on the orientation of the normal of that click point. So let's follow the operation again. Shift A, we're going to add a mesh plane. Let's switch it over. It remembers the size. Let's switch it over to 3D cursor. It's taken on the normal orientation. Let's move it down about right there. And then let's add a light to it, the glow one. And there we go. So now we just come over and do the same thing. Let's go ahead and rename this. We're going to call this area two. Shift A, let's add an empty to the cursor's location. 
and we're going to rename this area to target, add our target in the constraints, track two, assign that, it orients itself, and now we can come over and we can play with that until we see in the rendered view kind of how we like the expression of the light on that surface. And I actually like that a little bit better than how it was in its default orientation. So that's the cool thing is that you can use the 3D cursor for rotational functions in Blender.